Hello, George Romanich here. Today we are going to investigate the effect that the Coriolis force has on rivers, on water flowing through a river. And we will take a very interesting example of the Nil River in Egypt. The text of today's problem is now on your screens. So here is the setup for the problem. Here is the river. These are two banks of the river, east, west, north, south. And there is water, parcel of water, traveling due north in this river. Width of the river, 500 meters, and these are given in the setup of the problem. Find the height difference of the water on the west and east part, uh, sides of the river. So let's sketch this problem and discuss how would Coriolis force actually affect this motion? Well, first of all, as the water is traveling due north, Coriolis force is acting to the right. And therefore, there will be deviation of all of these particles of water to the right. To the right, because we are in the northern hemisphere. And therefore, there will be more water on the east side of, that, of this river compared to the west side, and therefore the depth over here will be somewhat larger than the depth over here. So if you don't know how to swim, it's better to jump on the west side because water should be shallower over here compared to over here, and for how much, and don't uh, have your hopes too high, it's just a few millimeters, this effect is very small, but for how much we will calculate today. So in this uh, figure, my x-axis will be towards the east, and that's positive, and the y-axis will be positive towards the north. Now, if we look at the same situation, but in the vertical cross-section, and now this is depth, so height is vertically up, Let's take that the, this would be a level, water level, if there is no Coriolis force, everything is flat. But as I said, Coriolis force acts to the right, moving all these particles to the right as they are traveling due north. So the water level will look something like this. And this over here is the age that we are trying to calculate. Again, this is the width of the river B. So if we take a parcel of water over here on the surface of this inclined water surface, then what are the forces that are acting on this parcel of air? Well, there is gravity acting down, and that would be mg. And now, there is Coriolis force acting to the right. Because this parcel is traveling into the blackboard, Coriolis force is acting to the right. So let's call this uh, Fc, Coriolis force. So when I sum up these two vectors, I get resultant force that is like this. So this parcel of air is pushing the rest of the water like this. There is no acceleration in this direction because this parcel of water doesn't sink and it definitely doesn't explode into the air. That means there has to be opposite force called normal force that is balancing this force and the parcel of air is steady traveling due north. So... To solve this problem, we use the greatest law ever discovered, second Newton's law. Mass times acceleration of this parcel of water is the sum of all forces that are acting on this parcel of water. So we will decompose uh, this vector equation into zonal x direction and vertical z direction. So, mass 
times acceleration in the x direction is equal, what are the forces in the x direction? Well, this normal force, I will decompose it into this component and this component. So this will be nz and this will be uh, nx, this component over here. I hope you can see this. Maybe I should have made a larger figure, but uh, you get what you paid for. So this angle over here is given, and this is angle alpha. This angle of the inclined surface of the water compared to the flat water is alpha. And now notice that uh, this line is normal to this line. This line is normal to this line, which means that this over here also needs to be angle alpha. Let me see how this is visible on camera. Ah, very visible, very visible. This is, this is better than uh, what I thought. I mean, you can see everything. So this is angle alpha. This is therefore angle alpha as well. So I hope that from this figure you can see that nx is equal n sine alpha and nz, this one, is equal n cosine alpha. Now, if we go back here, so in the x direction, we have Coriolis force acting to the right, fc, look, and in the negative direction of the x-axis, we have this nx, okay? Coriolis force is balanced by this nx. Now, mass times acceleration in the vertical direction. What is going on in the vertical direction? Well, this gravity, and that is negative mg, this gravity is balanced by the vertical component of this normal force. But I already said that there are no accelerations in the zonal and vertical direction. This is established equilibrium. This parcel of water doesn't go up, down, and doesn't go left, right. So these are zeros, which means from this equation, <clears throat> nx, and nx is n sine alpha is equal Coriolis force, and that would be uh, f times v times m mass of this parcel of air. That's Coriolis force from my previous videos. And from this equation, nz is n cosine alpha is equal, so this is equal positive mg. Now, I will divide these two equations and notice that n and n cancels. Sine divided by cosine is tangent alpha is equal, m and m fortunately cancels, and we get fv over g, where f, of course, you should know that f is Coriolis parameter from my previous videos, 2 omega of the earth, angular velocity of the earth, sine phi, where phi is latitude that is given, 29.5 degrees north. So this is tangent of this angle alpha. But from geometry, if this is angle alpha, 
tangent of alpha is h opposite divided by b adjacent. So tangent alpha from geometry is h over b. So when I combine these two equations, combining these two equations, I will get that h is equal f times b times v divided by g. Of course, it makes sense that g is in denominator because if the gravity was stronger, the stronger the gravity, the smaller the age. The, the stronger the gravity, if this was Jupiter, the stronger the gravity, then this gets more flattened because, uh, because uh, uh, Coriolis force is uh, the same, but gravity is stronger, and then this becomes more flat, of course. At any rate, this is the result that you get. Now, knowing that F is given over here, if you plug in these numbers, I believe, but you can double check on me, I believe that here you will get 7 millimeters, approximately. So the east part of the river is approximately 7 millimeters higher or deeper than the west part of the Nil River, and that is exclusively thanks to the Coriolis force. Perform this calculation for the river that is close to your home and see what the result, what result you will get. Until next video, goodbye.